We are pleased to be joined in the studio right now by four-star General Robert W. Cohn. Thanks for coming in the studio. We appreciate it this morning. My pleasure. One of only 201 four-star generals we just learned in the history of the country. And just to rattle off a few of those other four-star generals, uh, George Washington was a four-star general. MacArthur was a four-star general. Do you know all the four-star generals? Yeah, they're all good friends of mine. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) We were were talking offline about uh, motivating youth and and the future of the military. And uh, the statistics in terms of the number of young people that are qualified to even serve in the military, staggering. Could you speak to that? Yeah, one of my uh, subordinate commands is uh, U.S. Army Recruiting Command. So we, uh, you know, have a very uh, tight grip on the demographics of the eligible population. And it's somewhere around 23, 24 percent of American youth today between the ages of 18 and 24, which is our primary marketing area, are actually qualified. The biggest issues we face today are... Uh, fitness, uh, uh, in terms of overall health. Uh, frankly, uh, we're looking for high school graduates. It's probably the best predictor of, of being, being successful in a, in a tour in the military. And then, frankly, we can't, uh, we call them moral waivers. If you've been convicted of any crime or if you have uh, drugs in your background, probably not a good idea to give someone a weapon and send them to a foreign country and ask them to use their judgment. So, <laughs> and that knocks out 80% of 18 to 24 year olds. That's incredible. Yeah, you know, 70, whatever it is. Uh, it, it's, and it is. It's, uh, it, it, it's really pretty special, these young people today. And I, I'm so proud of them. Uh, last night I was at the, at the Blackhawks game. Uh, sending off a group of uh, young Americans who are going to go to Afghanistan for a year. And you just realize what it takes, first, to just to join the military, and then secondly, to sign on for that kind of commitment. And you could see all of them. This was one of their last nights at home. You see kind of the, I call it the thousand-mile stare in their eyes, Uh which means they're really thinking about their wives and children, uh, husbands, and those kinds of things. But what great young people that this country produces. And not that you, we want you to telegraph, uh, you know, what you're going to be saying today in your keynote address, but uh, speak about you know, military service. I mean, this is the day that we honor our veterans. I, one, veterans Day is one of my favorite uh, holidays because I think it helps those of us who serve today uh, gain some perspective on the sacrifices of the past. And in, in many ways, we stand on their shoulders. They raise us up uh, through their commitment and discipline and their sacrifice. They have set the standard uh, for today's generation uh, of young warfighters, uh, you know, to follow in their stead, I think it shows this tremendous continuity of patriotism uh, and really serving something bigger than yourself. So uh, when I see these veterans, uh, you know, World War II, we still have some of those around Korea, Vietnam, uh, and again, it, it for a young soldier, it sort of gives them their sense of standing in this long line. Uh, of people who've defended uh, this country. So it, it, it's tremendous to me. <clears throat> I'm very high on, you know, the, the Vietnam generation, most impressive to me. They were not treated the way my generation has been treated uh, coming back from war. Yet I would tell you most of the, you know, reaction, the groundswell of support we see today for soldiers is orchestrated behind the scenes by Vietnam veterans, whether it be a, you know, a funeral ser- a service where uh, they've gotten together on their motorcycles to block out any protesters. Uh, they have set the conditions to get so, so that this this generation gets the kind of reception that they never received themselves. What, you, how awesome. You, you talked about the, the talented people that... Uh uh, you, the necessary talent you need to even serve in the military this, uh, these days. So that's going in. Now, coming out, uh, the, the, the numbers are a little bit more disturbing. Uh, Iraq, Afghanistan veterans, 25% unemployment rate. If you've been, been disabled in service, it's more like 88% unemployment right. rate. Uh, what can be done beyond the clapping and the flag waving and the sincere expressions of gratitude on this day to do more to serve those veterans who had talent, uh, are capable and yet don't see opportunity on the back end of their service. Well, there's really uh, sort of uh, two sides to that. One is I think we could do a lot better job helping these soldiers in the military. For instance, I run the Army school system. Why I would certify an Army truck driver to any standard other than a commercial driver's license uh, defies logic. So what we have done is look at the basically the rough match between the jobs you do in the military, whether it be a welder, uh, whether it be a, a auto mechanic, and try to tie those to standards so that we can certify soldiers so they walk out of the military with a credential that 
a civilian recognizes. The other point uh, I would make on the civilian side is you need to know what you're getting uh, with a soldier, uh, sailor, airman, marines, all the services. These kids, you know, grow. Uh, th- their hallmark is leadership. Uh, their hallmark is sacrifice and hard work. And if you're looking for that kind of employee, uh, a former service member is exactly who you need to hire. You need to give them a chance. They may not be exactly the right fit, but believe me, these, these youngsters know how to adapt uh, and become a mainstay in your organization. All right, let's get down to brass tacks. Uh, you said you were at the Blackhawk game yesterday, but you were also at the football game yesterday. I was. The Bear game. You know about leadership. Trestman, come on. He caved. He let the subordinate to do, do what he wanted to do. How would a four-star general have handled that on the sidelines yesterday? <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you, it's, it's, uh, th- these are tough decisions, and uh, there's a leadership dynamic. There's a culture within the team, and I think uh, Mark Trustman has got a pretty good uh, handle on that. So I wouldn't – first thing you learn is you never second-guess another leader who's uh, in the line of fire. So, uh, But I'll tell you, it was uh, – it, it was an amazing event yesterday. I got to re-enlist uh, a bunch of uh, uh, service members, and he also got to recognize two uh, uh, local soldiers with the Bronze Star Medal. Wow! And uh, what a what an I said to as one of the I pinned on a, the kid you know with sixty five thousand people watching. I said, I "Bet you'll probably remember this." Call. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs>